Tonight, the urgent search for a shooter comes to an end. Armed and dangerous is how police in New York described the man they hunted for for hours after a chaotic scene in Times Square ended in a shooting that injured a tourist. Tonight, the other incidents they are tying the suspect to and who he may have been working with. Plus, bro. The scary moments on a Florida highway when a private charter jet landed on a packed highway colliding with a vehicle and then going up in smoke. We're going to bring you those incredible images in just moments. And it's setting up to be the most watched football game of all time. Why female viewers may be behind this Sunday's record-breaking championship face-off and how advertisers are taking advantage as we count down to the big game. Good evening, I'm Phil Lipoff in tonight for Lindsay Davis. Thanks so much for streaming with us. We are following those stories and much more, including the earthquakes that rocked Malibu, California and Hawaii, plus the EF2 tornado that touched down in Wisconsin doing some real damage there, and the major Wall Street milestone hit today and what it could mean for your wallet. But we are going to begin on this very busy Friday night with a deadly plane crash onto a Florida highway right in the middle of the afternoon. The private jet crashed on I-75 right near Naples, Florida, after the pilot was unable to reach the airport because of a reported engine failure. We are learning tonight at least two people have died. Three survivors were able to miraculously escape that burning wreckage you see there. Tonight, the investigation into what went wrong is just getting underway. Our Victor Akendo leads us off from Florida. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Tonight, that private jet oh engulfed in flames after crashing onto a busy Florida highway. A massive fireball in the middle of the afternoon rush. At least two people killed. We're clear to land, but we're not going to make the runway. Uh, we've lost both engines. Oh, there goes the wing. Yeah. Both engines failing on final approach just seconds before landing around 3 p.m. near Naples. Authorities saying five people were on board, two did not survive. Miraculously, three escaping with their lives. It took the top of that truck. The jet, a Bombardier Challenger 600, slamming into the southbound lanes of I-75 and colliding with a vehicle, leaving behind this fiery debris. And the barrier wall had a hole in it, was charred from, from fire and smoke. Joe Robinson watching in horror. As I passed by the crash, I could feel the heat from it as I was driving by from the opposite side of the highway. Bro. It seemed pretty catastrophic, pretty intense. How are you hurt? Uh, if those guys are OK or what's going on? I can't tell you for sure, but it didn't look good just due to the smoke. Flight records show the plane took off from Columbus, Ohio, yeah, scheduled for Naples Airport. The right crash right. causing major traffic delays, authorities shutting down a stretch of I-75 as the investigation gets underway. And Victor joins me now. Victor, what comes next after this crash? Phil, that plane crashed just two miles from the airport. Tonight, the NTSB is investigating, working to determine what may have caused those engines to fail. Phil? Yep, an investigation is underway. Victor, thank you. Meantime, here in New York City, late word tonight of an arrest in the shooting of a tourist inside a store in Times Square. A 15-year-old from Venezuela accused of shoplifting, opening fire, then taking aim at officers while fleeing. ABC senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky has more on the late-breaking developments. Tonight, a 15-year-old who police called armed and dangerous has been caught after allegedly shooting a tourist in Times Square. In less than 24 hours, our teams removed a very, very violent subject that had zero reservations about firing shots and endangering our great public. Jesus Figueroa was apprehended in Yonkers less than 24 hours after police say he opened fire on officers and fled. Authorities say Figueroa was shoplifting Thursday evening at this sporting goods store. Surveillance video shows a female security guard confronting him in the lobby and yanking back the stolen items before the teen in white turns and pulls out a gun. My suspect takes out a 45 caliber handgun, a very large handgun, shoots at her into a crowd, striking a female tourist from Brazil. The shooter takes off on foot. When officers give chase, he fires at them twice. We heard a pop back there. The teen then dumps his jacket and ducks into the subway. Tonight, the tourist struck in the leg, telling our station WABC, Dá um pouco de medo, né? I leave Brazil, which is a dangerous place, to come here. Now I'm a little scared. The shooting follows the assault on police captured on body camera outside a migrant shelter in Times Square nearly two weeks ago. 
Seven people face charges. Police still looking for some of the suspects. We are going to pursue anyone that commits a crime, if they are long-standing New Yorkers or if they are new arrivals. And Aaron joins me now. Aaron, police tonight learning more about this suspect. They are Phil, 15 years old. He recently arrived in the United States from Venezuela. That was back in September. And he had been staying at a city-run shelter for migrants, actually just up the block from here. Police also believe he may have been involved in a recent shooting in Midtown Manhattan and a robbery up in the Bronx. Phil. Aaron Katursky from New York City tonight. Aaron, thank you. We are following developments in two separate earthquakes, one in California, another in Hawaii. In California, a magnitude 4.6 quake hit near Malibu. The quake was felt by millions of people in the Los Angeles area. Just minutes earlier, a magnitude 5.7 quake hit just south of the Big Island with reports of aftershocks following. ABC's chief national correspondent, Matt Gutman, in Los Angeles. <laughs> Tonight, damage assessments underway after Southern California was rattled by a 4.6 magnitude earthquake. An earthquake has been felt in L.A. County. Our station, KABC, broadcasting live when it struck. It's in Ventura County, Orange County, L.A. County. All of them have felt it. The epicenter, just northwest of Malibu. The shaking likely felt by millions of people, says seismologist Dr. Lucy Jones. I felt it here in Pasadena. It's felt widely across the L.A. area. It's about halfway between Malibu and Thousand Oaks, so under the what are called the Santa Monica Mountains. We do have reports of a couple of aftershocks, one of 3.0 northwest of Malibu, a 2.7, that is west-northwest of Malibu. It well, definitely moved, uh, moved a lot around here. The California quake coming on the heels of a 5.7 quake that hit the big island of Hawaii. Reporter Jeremy Lee from our station KITV is near the epicenter. It was felt all over the island, not only that, but also on other islands. Reports of the earthquake felt on Maui, on Oahu. That quake also followed by multiple aftershocks. Matt Gutman joins us now from L.A. Matt, any connection between this earthquake and the one in Hawaii? Phil, they happened at virtually the same time, just uh, basically minutes apart. But scientists stress that there is no connection between the quakes. There are completely different faults in Hawaii and here in Southern California. Um, but aftershocks in both places are expected, certainly today and in the coming days. Uh, not a lot of damage expected here, especially in Southern California, where most of the buildings are built to withstand seven magnitude quakes. Phil. All right. Matt Gutman from L.A. Matt, thank you. We move now to President Biden furious and fighting back against a special counsel report clearing him over his handling of classified documents. But all of this has raised more questions about his age and mental acuity. The White House is now trying to control the damage over what is already a key campaign issue. ABC's chief White House correspondent Mary Bruce reports. Tonight, sources tell ABC News President Biden is fuming over the special counsel report that's raising new questions about his age and mental acuity. But in front of cameras today, Biden tight-lipped. Special counsel Robert Hur's report cleared Biden legally, concluding he should not face charges for his handling of classified material. One of the reasons Biden would likely present himself to a jury, as he did during our interview of him, as a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. Biden firing back. I'm well-meaning and I'm an elderly man and I know what the hell I'm doing. The president angry and emotional at hers claim that in his interview, Biden did not remember even within several years when his son Beau died. How in the hell dare he raise that? Frankly, when I was asked the question, I thought to myself, it wasn't any of their damn business. Today, the White House launched a full-throated attack on the special counsel, who once served as a U.S. attorney appointed by Donald Trump. First, it was Vice President Kamala Harris taking aim, asked by our Selena Wang. The comments that were made by that prosecutor, gratuitous, inaccurate, and inappropriate. The way that the president's demeanor in that report was characterized could not be more wrong on the facts and clearly politically motivated, gratuitous. The spokesman for the White House counsel repeatedly attacking Robert Hur, questioning his motives for highlighting the president's memory lapses. 
we're in a very pressurized political environment. And when you are the first special counsel in history not to indict anybody, there is pressure to criticize and to make, you know, statements that maybe in otherwise you wouldn't make. Mary joins us from the White House now. Mary, Team Biden clearly on the defensive tonight, but this issue is not going away. It sure isn't, Phil. In fact, recent polling shows that voters are still deeply concerned about the president's age, including a majority of Democrats. And people are also taking note of the president's public appearances. He's decided to forego this weekend's traditional Super Bowl interview and the chance to reach that massive audience. But the campaign is brushing off these concerns. They argue that voters have already made up their minds about the president's age. Phil. Mary Bruce from the White House. Mary, thank you. Thank you. Ten states are under alerts for heavy snow and rain from Montana to Texas. And there is also record heat extending from Chicago to the northeast this weekend with a winter blast right behind it. ABC senior meteorologist Rob Marciano joins me now to time it all out. Hey, Rob. Hey, Phil, you know, we had that warmth and we had a couple of tornadoes as far north as Wisconsin. That's very rare, a signal of climate change. But we're going to slide back into the cold air here uh, before too long. Let's start with the west. We've got advisories up, as you mentioned, across the Intermountain West and a winter storm watch posted for the panhandle of Texas and Oklahoma. A couple of disturbances will eject out of there. The first one will bring heavy rain, I think, uh, to the Mid-South and push into the Mid-Atlantic. The one behind it, a little bit stronger. That one's going to drag down some snow into parts of Oklahoma and North Texas and also maybe spawn some severe storms on Sunday across uh, Arkansas and Louisiana. Ahead of that is where the heat is, 70s potentially across the Carolinas, 60s in D.C. tomorrow, 50s for New York and Boston might see some records uh, fall. And then on Monday and Tuesday, we'll see just enough cold air sink down along I-95 with that stronger system hitting Texas. That will likely bring some significant snows to the, at least the interiors of the Northeast. We'll just have to see the details on whether or not the I-95 corridor uh, gets cold enough to see significant snow there. But it looks like a storm is coming come Monday and Tuesday. Phil? Yeah, a little something for everyone. All right, Rob, thank you. Now to the Israel-Hamas war. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu signaling a new escalation of attacks in Gaza, ordering the evacuation of civilians from Rafah, which is where more than a million people have fled to for safety and shelter. President Biden criticizing Israel, calling its actions in Gaza, quote, over the top. ABC's James Longman in Israel again tonight. Tonight, fresh horror in the last remaining refuge for Palestinians in Gaza. Israeli bombs raining down on Rafah today. This baby pulled from the rubble alive. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu ordering civilians to evacuate Rafah, the southernmost city in Gaza, where more than one million Palestinians were told to flee for safety. But it's unclear where they'd go. Many, like Philistine Jamal Abdel Hamid, now crammed into tent cities. We've been suffering for more than five months. The place they said was safe, they entered it. There's no safe place, Philistine says. Israel claiming it must destroy four Hamas battalions still in Rafah. Hamas now says the Gaza death toll has soared to nearly 28,000 people. President Biden offering his sharpest criticism of Israel yet. The conduct of the response in Gaza, in the Gaza Strip has been um, over the top. And tonight, ABC News has learned one of the Israeli hostages held in Gaza may have been killed in an Israeli airstrike. Israel telling the family of 53-year-old Yossi Sharabi he likely died when a building adjacent to an IDF target collapsed. And James joins us now from Tel Aviv. James, you reported extensively on Israel's expanding offensive in Rafah in southern Gaza, but if that is to happen, where are the refugees supposed to go? That is the big question, Phil. No details right now. Hundreds of thousands have migrated there away from the fighting. They've had to move multiple times. Often they're told to move to quote unquote safe zones, but the bombs have followed them there. This is going to take uh, weeks of planning. We're talking about over a million people. And it should be said as well that the United States is saying tonight that if Israel launches a full scale military operation while those civilians are still there, they call that a disaster. Phil. All right. James Longman from Tel Aviv. James, thank you. 
A father fighting off a man who tried to take his child from a CVS in Miami Beach. All of it caught on camera. Police are reviewing this video showing the 26-year-old suspect just walking in and grabbing the 4-year-old. The boy's father immediately reacting, fighting the man as the child runs back to his mother. The suspect was arrested. The boy shaken, obviously, but physically unharmed. The five Marines who were killed Tuesday in a crash near San Diego have now been identified. The youngest Marine, 21 years old, the oldest, just 28. The Marines on a nighttime flight training mission going down in stormy weather. They were flying in a Super Stallion chopper, the largest helicopter flown by the U.S. military designed to carry troops and heavy cargo. We shift now to our economy and the stock market on a record run. The S&P 500 gaining 28 points, closing above 5,000 points for the first time ever. It's notched 10 all-time highs so far this year, and it's up 14 of the past 15 weeks, something that hasn't happened since 1972. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze is joining me now for more on this. So, Elizabeth, what's this run about? You know, Phil, this is a big milestone. The S&P 500 tracks the 500 biggest companies in the U.S. It's what's reflected in most people's retirement or 401k accounts. And it hasn't ever crossed 5,000 until today. What is driving this is overall strength in the economy. We've seen that inflation is getting better. Consumers are outspending money, and they're getting a little bit more upbeat about the economy, too. And at the same time, the jobs market is just humming along, adding hundreds of thousands of jobs every month. All of this is contributing to companies having strong earnings. We've seen that about 80% that have, of companies that are big that have reported their earnings so far beat expectations. And especially that's the case with some of the biggest companies right now. So think of names like Microsoft, Meta, um, Google. Those are big companies that are really feeling a lot of the growth, especially when you look at the S&P 500, Phil. Elizabeth, you know this well. Sometimes when the numbers come out and they're good, not exactly felt by, say, the average hardworking American. So how does something like this, this kind of milestone, translate from Wall Street to Main Street? No question about it. And, and you know, there is the reality that overall gains in the stock market do tend to contribute to increased sentiment by consumers. So that does make households feel a little bit better about their finances when you see the stock market continue to have these types of gains. About 60% of households own stocks. So there are actual wealth effects from this. You know, you this is money that goes into your 401k. The S&P up 5% means that your portfolio would be up that much. A lot of, you know, I've been asking a lot of financial advisors, does that mean, you know, if you're not invested, it's too late to get in right now? The general General consensus is you want to try to build that long-term wealth. If you're in it for the long haul, still is a good time to try to think about making some of those investments because that is a way to try to get your longer-term wealth in, uh, better and also feel better about your finances too, Phil. All right, Elizabeth Schulze on the markets for us tonight. Elizabeth, thank you. Prince Harry will get a substantial payout for the remaining parts of his tabloid lawsuit. His attorney says he will get an interim payout of more than a half a million dollars from Mirror Group newspapers. In December, a judge ruled Harry was the victim of phone hacking. The Mirror Group saying this agreement gives them clarity to move forward. The prince is calling for a criminal investigation. Ahead of Sunday's Super Bowl, some Native American groups are protesting the Kansas City Chiefs, demanding the team changes its name. Kansas City often honoring VIPs, having them bang a large drum at home games, with fans chanting and doing the tomahawk chop, as they call it. Uh, the protesting groups are calling on owners and fans to stop appropriating and perpetuating stereotypes of Native people. There is still much more to get to here tonight on Prime. A police chase caught on camera. What was found inside this stolen U-Haul? But next, a cosmetic procedure gaining popularity, leg lengthening. Doctors expanding bones to get to new heights. But is it worth it? How tall were you? Five nine. That's the average height for an American male. I'm not average. I don't like to be average. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yeah! 
traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Yet another avalanche warning that's up. To catch you up with what happened overnight. A dangerous ice storm is impacting the morning commute. What's happening today? Escalating tensions in the Middle East. What people are talking about. The migrant crisis. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. How does billionaire sound? Sounds good to me. The moose started chasing a dog. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Oh my. Y'all tuning in for Taylor Swift, you're gonna be tuning in for Usher too. You're gonna do it, do it big. Oh my God. They say Oscar, Tony, Grammy, Emmy, you should put Super Bowl on there too. Baby, let me love you Usher now. Raymond is going to get shirtless. I don't think it'll break any FCC violations. <laughs> Go shirtless. Hey man, that's what I do. It's <laughs> Usher, baby. Yeah! Usher, my way to the Super Bowl. This is Impact by Nightline, now streaming on Hulu. Lust, greed, betrayal. This is one of the most complex investigations I've ever seen. 2020 true crime. They had gunshot wounds to their heads and torsos. It was hard to believe. We discovered she had a second career as an escort. She had three cameras at her apartment. Did these cameras capture her killer? Sealed with a kill. No one could have fathomed how twisted this story would become. 2020, tonight at 9, 8 central on ABC. Welcome back. Tonight, we want to take you into a world few have seen or experienced, but one that is gaining popularity among men across the country. Leg lengthening, it's called, and it is exactly as it sounds, where doctors go in, break the bones of a leg, and then insert a rod that expands inside the bone, ultimately giving some men the height they always dreamed of. So what started it all, and who would put themselves through this kind of thing just for a few more inches? Ashan Singh has the story. Take your shoes off. What's <laughs> up, baby? This Come is crazy, on, man. man. <laughs> Let's get this going. Let's go. It's morning on the high seas, and the party is in full swing. Whether it's a day on a yacht, or an afternoon stroll on the designer strip, shelling out major cash, for the high life. Wherever they are and whatever they're buying, there's really no doubt that these two are living in the lap of luxury. Yo, life sure is good if you're Hugo Ramirez, a Texas businessman turned Miami socialite, and his wife, Oksana, a former Mykonos model, now a social media maven and a fluffy dog mom. Here is our baby. Uh, her name is Barbie. Oh yeah, she loves the cameras. <laughs> You like her dress? Is that Coco Chanel? Very Boy. spoiled. Their lifestyle, flashy. The cars, the clothes, the vibe, larger than life. Hey. Hey. How are you? Now, as far as Hugo is concerned. <laughs> How are you feeling? Great. Let's not beat around the bush and state the obvious. There's some work that's been done here. And he freely admits it. What kind of procedures are you willing to talk about that, that you have done? I mean, I just did my face. You just did your face? Yeah, I just did my face. What'd you do? I had a jaw implant and chin implant, and I had them replace it. Mm. And then I had them tie my neck and demise. It's the biggest rush. Is that what you get from doing these yeah, procedures? Yeah, this is the biggest rush ever. Hugo says it's all a part of his quest to look young, yoked, and glamorous. But amidst the implants, the nips, and the tucks, there lives another secret sauce to Hugo's success. Something that he says has given him a leg up in the business world in his personal life, in everything. How tall were you? 5'9". That's the average height for an American male. I'm not average. I don't like to be average. He's like, babe, I want to be taller. I want to be taller. Money can buy you a lot of things, but surely money can't make you taller, right? So you went from how tall to how tall? I went from 5'9". It depends, you know, where's the without shoes, you know? Right now, I'm with, without shoes, I'm like, 5'11 and a half, give or take. Mm. With shoes, I'm 6'1. 
six one. Yeah. That's right. Hugo grew nearly three inches. So how did he do it? So here's our implants. Extra. Leg lengthening surgery. Extra. If you haven't heard of it, here's the word. For 70 grand or more, a doctor can surgically make you taller. When you describe a handsome guy, you know, what do you say? Tall, dark, and handsome. Right? Tall is the first thing. It's definitely harder out there for shorter men. I will say it with 100% certainty. The whole thing isn't as crazy as it sounds. In fact, doctors have been doing it for decades. All right, just have a seat here, Jerry. This guy right here, known casually as Dr. D, has done hundreds of them. It's like the animal kingdom, right? The bigger lion or the bigger the bears, they have this primal instinct of just being more powerful. And I think that translates to humans as well. We'll get to how it all works later. But first, meet Jerry. My name is uh, Jerry Agee. I am a nurse from Mobile, Alabama. I think height is an extremely important thing when it comes to just life in general that many people overlook. Today, I measured in at five, five on the dot. Jerry and Hugo live very different lives, but they're on a similar journey, both with Dr. D looking to see the world from new heights. Did you always feel like 5'9 was short growing yeah. up? What was it about being taller that... The respect. I had to earn my respect. Huh. People are taller, they don't have to earn the respect. I mean, you could be an idiot and be tall, and you get respect. Sometimes I want to reach stuff in the aisles of a Walmart, and you just can't because you're short and you got to get on your tippy toes, and I feel like it's sometimes embarrassing. If you're given an opportunity to change something about your life and you know that it'll help you with your attitude and how you feel about things and the way that you carry yourself, I think most people would take it, and I took it. I think leg lengthening is extremely controversial because as physicians, we're always asking questions such as what are the risks and what are the benefits? In this type of procedure, we can see the benefit is helping the patient get taller, but the risks seem immense. But in order to fully get it, let's take a ride over to the de facto leg lengthening capital. Vegas, baby. We're in Vegas, where the whole world comes to get lucky, get rich, or get lost. But how about get taller? We're bringing behind the scenes of the newest cosmetic surgery that's bringing the whole world to its knees. Kind of like that. We'll get our lights better position, like right around there. Away from the bright lights and frenetic chaos of the Vegas Strip, you'll find a different type of frenzy happening, performed by a man who, if you're born of a certain height, might just be able to change your life. X-ray. His medical degree says Kevin Devi Prashad on it, but to his patients, he's just Dr. D. He's one of the most well-known limb-lengthening surgeons in the country. This is uh, what, what my life's all about. That's right. He can make you taller. You guys are actually breaking the bone. We do. It's a, it's a surgical break, so the, the, the bone barely moves. Um, so we do fenestrations in the bone itself, kind of like a paper towel. And then we tap it a couple times, and it just perfectly separates at that area. And then the rod goes down and transfixes that. So this is where we actually break the bone. It's a pretty small overall incision. Um, so generally a fairly cosmetic uh, result overall. The rod, or nail as they call it, expands while the yeah, bone grows around, around it. The nail then responds to the external remote control, which then slowly lengthens the nail apart. As it does so, it separates that break, and that break constantly tries to heal itself. And then you just continue that process over the next two months two and a half months, depending on how much length the patient is hoping to gain, and then eventually that full gap will completely consolidate. After a year or so, the nail comes out. It's a lengthy process. It's also unbelievably expensive. How much does a procedure like this actually cost? Yeah, I mean, the procedure itself is not inexpensive. I mean, it probably starts at around 72,000. As you might predict, the reaction when people hear about what goes into this kind of surgery has been swift. This is the most insane thing that I've seen for a long time. I can't believe people are doing this. It looks intense for 10 centimeters in your height. There are many risks to leg lengthening surgeries. For example, damage to muscles, damage to ligaments and tendons, and even permanent nerve damage. And also the procedure itself has a high risk of infection. So all of these risks need to be taken into account when the patient is making their decision on whether or not they would want to do something like this. It's also been lampooned by comedians like Kevin Hart. He said, they're giving out height. Go get you some. 
You mean they giving out hype? Exactly what I said. They giving out hype. They taking the fat out of people's backs, putting it in their knees. <laughs> I was actually in the audience when Kevin Hart was doing that. He was here in Las Vegas, so I, I got invited to, to, to sit in on that. But uh, Was that frustrating to hear, or was that more like any press know, is good I, press? Yeah, like, uh, well, you know, I thought it was funny, I guess. But no, I mean, we don't use fat. I mean, obviously, uh, we use your own natural bone that you have. Back in the OR. All right, here we go. So why don't we go ahead and uh, we'll get ready. Stay perfectly still right there. Hold it up higher. OK. That's right. So I'll get my osteotomy. This is extra. So now we're done this first side. We got the nail implanted, and we'll do some irrigation. Let me see lateral. All right, all done with uh, Jerry's case. He's going to be heading back over to recovery now for about an hour's time, and then we're going to get him up to the ward. In about three to four hours, we'll get him up walking with his walker, and he'll start his journey with leg lengthening. Months later, Jerry is well on his road to recovery. All right, our thanks to Ashan Singh for that. There is still much more to get to tonight. Coming up, a plane making a crash landing on a beach. But when officers arrive, it was empty. What happened to the pilot? Next, Super Bowl win could be historic for whoever takes home the trophy this Sunday. We're going to take a closer look by the numbers. at stake. So much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Oh, my. Y'all tuning in for Taylor Swift. You're going to be tuning in for Usher, too. You're going to do it, do it big. Oh, my God. They say Oscar, Tony, Grammy, Emmy. You should put Super Bowl on there, too. Baby, let me love you. Usher Raymond is going to get shirtless. I don't think it'll break any FCC violations. <laughs> Go shirtless. Hey, man, that's what I do. It's Usher, baby. Yeah! Usher, my way to the Super Bowl. This is Impact by Nightline, now streaming on Hulu. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Yet another avalanche warning that's up. To catch you up with what happened overnight. A dangerous ice storm is impacting the morning commute. What's happening today? Escalating tensions in the Middle East. What people are talking about. The migrant crisis. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. How does billionaire sound? Sounds good to me. The moose started chasing a dog. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. So the question is... Okay, here we go. Oh Are you kidding me? What would you do? You just won't believe what people do when they think no one's watching. And this season, I brought Sarah Haynes and Kamal Bell along for the ride. All right, let's break it. Is John Theonis here? Oh my I was here all the time. The all-new season of What Would You Do? premieres Sunday, February 18th on ABC. 
do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. Me. Reporting in Los Angeles along the LA River that right now has rapids on it with this storm. I'm Ginger Z. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back. Reigning Super Bowl champs Kansas City facing San Francisco for the Vince Lombardi Trophy this Sunday, and it could be one for the history books. So let's take a look by the numbers. There were eight back-to-back -back wins in the first 39 Super Bowls, but it hasn't happened in 19 years. The last time was when the Patriots accomplished that feat, and Sunday's quarterbacks Patrick Mahomes and Brock Purdy were still in elementary school. It'll be Mahomes' third Super Bowl victory if the Chiefs win, something only four previous quarterbacks have done. The names are Bradshaw, Montana, Aikman, and Brady. And at just 28 years old, Mahomes is already the youngest quarterback in history to start a fourth Super Bowl. But the 49ers are chasing history of their own. The first father-son duo to win Super Bowls as head coaches could go to the 49ers coach Kyle Shanahan and his father Mike, who led the Broncos to consecutive wins in the late 90s. No matter who wins the game, Middle Tennessee State University has reason to celebrate two Chiefs and one 49er alums. In fact, this is the fifth consecutive season. At least one of their grads will be in the Super Bowl. Lots of reasons to break out the snacks and join the more than 100 million people expected to watch Sunday's game. We have much more ahead here on Prime. A look at another anticipated part of the big game, the ads. Why there's a switch in focus for many commercials this year. And how one teen's honesty may have saved his school, the confession he made to one of his parents. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, from Poland once again tonight. Thank you so much for streaming with us. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. Do you think you'll ever be able to go back home? We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Splintered houses and splintered lives and the magnitude of the devastation. You're streaming ABC News Live. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Santa Fe, New Mexico. Raleigh, North Carolina. The U.S. Capitol. Mayfield, Kentucky. Minneapolis. Mexico. Tongass National Forest, Alaska. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. Giving you a front row seat to our world as it plays out in real time, live. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights, America's most honored streaming news program, only on ABC News Live. Streaming free right now, wherever you stream your news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Yet another avalanche warning that's up. To catch you up with what happened overnight. A dangerous ice storm is impacting the morning commute. What's happening today, escalating tensions in the Middle East. What people are talking about, the migrant crisis. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. How does billionaires sound? Sounds good to me. The moose started chasing a dog. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember...
that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi, Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes. And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories, Start Here. Now, that's a part of the story that you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. Oh, my. Y'all tuning in for Taylor Swift. You're going to be tuning in for Usher, too. You're going to do it, do it big. Oh, my God. They say Oscar, Tony, Grammy, Emmy. You should put Super Bowl on there, too. Baby, let me love you. I'm sure Raymond is going to get shirtless. I don't think it'll break any FCC violations. <laughs> Go shirtless. Hey, man, that's what I do. It's <laughs> Usher, baby. Yeah! Usher, my way to the Super Bowl. This is Impact by Nightline, now streaming on Hulu. Welcome back. A dangerous police chase caught on camera. A teen helped stop a tragedy at a school. And Guinness goes back on a decision for one of its world records. Those stories and more in tonight's Rundown. A traffic stop turned into a high-speed chase in Arkansas. As the driver fled the scene, police chased the suspect through busy intersections. Officers caught up to the suspects, colliding with the van, bringing it to a stop with guns drawn. Officers arrested the two suspects and then searched the vehicle. Inside, they found multiple firearms and a stash of Molotov cocktails. Both suspects were detained and charged. A teen is credited with helping thwart a school shooting allegedly plotted by his classmate at this high school in Ohio. Zach Swalen says his son, Boom, wasted no time earlier this week, telling him that his classmate had revealed a plan to shoot people at Marie Mont High School. The swift action was definitely warranted, and I'm grateful that my son reached out. Investigators say that classmate allegedly planned to kill eight students and a teacher. Waylon says the suspect threatened Boom if he told anyone about the plan, but that did not stop Boom from doing the right thing. He literally told me that he didn't care if, uh, if he got killed as long as he was able to protect his classmates. A stolen plane made an emergency landing on a beach in California. Police say the single-engine plane was stolen from nearby Palo Alto Airport and touched down nose first onto the sand. Witnesses say the suspect flying the plane walked away from the scene after landing. Officers caught up with the pilot and placed him under arrest. The San Mateo Sheriff's Office says the suspect is a 50-year-old man from Miami. American consumers reported losing more than $10 billion to fraud in 2023. The Federal Trade Commission reporting investment scams topped that list, swindling people out of almost $5 billion. FTC says easy access to digital financial tools opens the door for scammers targeting people. That $10 billion consumer fraud loss is a 14% jump over 2022. The scammer's most popular method to separate you and your money? Email. On this day, 60 years ago, four musicians changed music forever. The Beatles appeared on The Ed Sullivan Show for their first live U.S. performance in 1964. That sparked a wave of Beatlemania and captivated a generation of American fans. They estimate that 73 million people watched The Ed Sullivan Beatles performance that night. The Beatles continued shaping popular culture and pioneered new recording techniques, pushing the boundaries of what pop music could be. The group split in the early 1970s. Their musical influence lives on. A French man who used matchsticks to build a 23-foot-tall model of the Eiffel Tower has been granted a Guinness World Record. After they initially denied him the title, Guinness had disqualified him because he used matchsticks that weren't commercially available. They then reversed course after changing their criteria. That man used more than 700,000 matchsticks he ordered specifically for the project. Took eight years to build the model for more than 30 pounds of matchsticks. 
Customers around the country are still seeing higher prices at fast food restaurants. Even with prices going down at the grocery store, inflation is keeping costs up at the drive through ABC's business correspondent Rebecca Jarvis with the details. It's your fast food with a side of sticker shock. Taco Bell, KFC, and Pizza Hut joining a growing list of fast food chains, including industry giants Starbucks and McDonald's, reporting weaker than expected sales due to higher prices and cost-conscious consumers. For months, customers have been taking to social media to deliver their supersized frustrations. Despite cooling inflation with grocery prices up 1.3% last year, food away from home keeps rising up more than 5%. We're seeing fast food restaurants increase their prices in response to inflation as well as rising wages. In some states, the minimum wage is being increased. And so they have to work that into their hourly wage that they're paying their employees. And they're gonna pass that off to the consumer, which is also why you're seeing an increase in their prices. The CEO of McDonald's this week promising more attention to affordability moving forward. Taco Bell offering 10 items under $3 and KFC rolling out a new loyalty program to boost sales. We're seeing some of these fast food restaurant chains underperforming because they've raised their prices and consumers are starting to see that and it's affecting their wallets. You can go to a McDonald's, a Wendy's, a Pizza Hut and still pay the amount that you would for a sit down restaurant meal. And so it's just not worth it. It's easier. It's less expensive to eat at home. Rebecca Jarvis, thank you. Meantime, dollar stores are known for their deep discounts, and more of them are popping up all across the country. But critics of the budget chain say there is a downside to their increasing presence. ABC's Ran and Alley with the details. Chicago is the latest city taking steps to rein in dollar stores. Critics claim the stores can be a danger to communities. Their stores are filthy. They don't keep the trash up in front of the communities. The proposal, up for a vote next week, would ban dollar stores owned by the same company from opening within one mile of each other. Dozens of smaller cities and towns in the U.S. have already taken similar steps. The small box retailers have been under fire, accused of violating health and building codes. Stores in Chicago have racked up more than $600,000 in fines since 2017 for everything from overcharging customers and selling tobacco to minors to selling expired infant formula and medicine. Safety, also a concern. Literally, my daughter was asked by her manager to bring her carry and conceal because he did not feel safe. In response, Dollar Tree says it has spent $1.5 million upgrading and repairing stores and boosting staffing levels. It says the Chicago proposal will limit one of the few low-cost, high-value options for essential household goods and force residents to travel further and likely pay higher prices. But some critics argue dollar stores drive out grocery chains, leaving access only to less healthy processed and canned foods. Our thanks to Rhiannon and Ali. There is some good news if you are in the market for a new or used car following a very challenging auto market with low inventory and rising costs. Dealership lots are now filling up again. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze back with us and has the details on how 2024 is looking like the best year since the pandemic to buy a car. Much needed relief for Americans on the hunt for a new car. It's becoming a buyer's market and it's a much better time to buy a car. Experts say dealerships are stocked again after suffering from supply chain backlogs that left many lots low on options for buyers. Dealerships are oversupplied in a lot of cases and they're starting to compete with each other by offering incentives that's driving prices down. Auto analysts say brands with excess inventory like Ford, GM and Stellantis are most likely to lower their prices. And with the Federal Reserve set to cut interest rates this year, sky-high auto loan rates could also level off. It was definitely a shock to see how expensive cars are. Megan and Addison Ness told us in August they'd been trying to buy a car in Denver, but five months later haven't found anything in their budget. We really thought we could get her something around 10, um, then we moved to the $12,000 and then 14,000 and we're hoping 15 will do it. 
The average price for a new car is still at an eye-popping $49,970, $8,000 more than before the pandemic began. And while used car prices are dropping, the average cost of $28,000 is also $8,000 higher. Consumers demanded larger vehicles, they demanded more amenities, and automakers have met that demand. So a big part of the issue is that there are not a lot of cheaper vehicles for sale, period. Many Americans now forced to take on more debt to pay for their vehicles, with auto loan delinquencies rising too. What advice do you have for someone trying to find a deal on a car right now? Look at new, look at used, look at certified pre-owned. All of those can represent a good deal depending on where you're looking. Making sure you're seeing incentives in certain regions for certain trim levels, for certain vehicles. That's all really important to save yourself some money. Elizabeth, thank you. The former general manager of the New York Mets, Billy Epler, suspended for fabricating player injuries. Epler had already resigned in October when Major League Baseball's investigation went public. That investigation concluding that Epler directed the team over two seasons to fabricate injuries in order to open spots on the roster. Mets owner Steve Cohen and former manager Buck Showalter were not mentioned in the public findings. Our thanks to Elizabeth Schulze for that. Millions of Americans are anticipating football's biggest night this weekend with Super Bowl Sunday. But another big part of the game, and arguably the biggest for some people, are the ads. Joining me now to discuss this a little bit more is Chief Content Officer for Ad Week, Zoe Ruderman. Zoe, thanks so much for taking the time to do this. What are you most excited about? I said I was excited for the Clydesdales, but what are you most excited to I'm see? I'm excited for the Clydesdales. You know, listen, I get excited for the humor. I get excited mm. for the celeb spotting, but I'm like you. I like those moments that make you tear up. I'm not afraid to admit it. No, that make you sort of pull your kids make fun of me, But those are great commercials. Totally, and also there's gonna be a lot of nostalgia moments too, so I'm all in for that. All right, so we're told the focus this year is going to be women, that advertisers are going to be targeting women. Is that first? out of the ordinary one would think that most on a Super Bowl Sunday would target men this year targeting women um, why? So historically, nearly 50% of the audience for Super Bowl has been women. So this what? isn't a new trend. We know that more women are watching NFL games, but for Super Bowl, it's been pretty split even. Now, keep in mind, if we look at the timeline of Taylor and Travis, <laughs> they came out publicly in September. Most brands had to buy their Super Bowl spots in the fall. So this isn't something that you can, you know, a couple weeks ago when you know the Chiefs are in the game, that Taylor's probably going to be there. You right. can't suddenly pivot, buy a 30-second spot, do your creative from scratch. So yes, you're gonna see more brands targeting females and specifically younger women, but it's not gonna be across the board all about the Taylor effect. Okay, yeah, you can't blame everything on Taylor Swift. You cannot, or that's true. Or attribute everything yes. to her. Um, another big push is to attract new audience. The game's being broadcast in Spanish yes. on Univision. It's not the first time that's happened, uh, but what kind of opportunity does this present to advertisers? This is really huge. So there's a number of brands doing Spanish language only content, um, spots on Univision. Um, there's a really great spot that's directed by Fred Armisen, who is part Venezuelan. Um, it's a nod to the song Suavemente. It's for Total by Verizon. Um, Nissan has another Spanish language spot with um, an SNL Latino star. Um, the price point is lower too because the audience is slightly smaller. So we don't know how much lower, but it allows for other brands to get an in speak directly to this audience. You mentioned price point. We always talk about how much a 30 second yes. ad costs in the Super Bowl. This year, what is it, what is it going it for? It is not cheap. No, it no, is. it's never cheap. <laughs> just to be clear, it is um, $7 million for a 30 second spot. Now keep in mind, that's just to buy the airtime. So right. that's not the creative shooting, and that is definitely not paying the celebrities, of which there are many. Yeah, and, and some of these have like five, six, seven, eight celebrities. Yeah, it used to be that it was sort of a wow moment when you saw one right. star, maybe two stars together. Now we're seeing spots with celebrities in the double digits um, and it's not uncommon to see three four five stars in one spot you know you mentioned Taylor Swift and you, you can't talk about this game with her boyfriend being such a huge player in the game without talking about her do you know of any specific companies that are targeting Swifties Absolutely. So we know that there are a few brands targeting young women. So Dove is coming back after a near decade hiatus and they're targeting specifically young women. Um, it's about how uh, young girls drop out of sports when they hit puberty and it's about getting them to stay in the game. Um, Elf, the beauty brand, is coming back with a whole slew of celebrities. We know they're targeting women, especially young women. Um, Etsy, which we think of as more of like a, a female skewing brand, is in it for the first time. And then Nerds, the candy brand, 
brand, which is like, you know, the I candy of my youth. Um, <laughs> so they're coming back. They're going to have Addison Ray in the spot. So oh definitely goodness. we're seeing a shift towards influencer TikTok generation. Okay. And just finally, what, what, you know, you've seen some of these, right? So why do companies release them early? Is that, you know, to generate this kind of buzz? Exactly. So it goes back to the price. If you're going to spend seven, $10 million on 30 seconds, you want it to have longevity. So a lot of these brands are releasing it a week or two in advance. And it's about like the teases. So you start to see um, like Uber Eats, for example, you knew that the Beckhams were in it and they sort of tease is Jennifer Aniston going to be in it. Then it turns out that there's a whole Ross and Rachel moment with Jennifer and David Schwimmer. Oh, um, right. So it's about creating that buzz leading up to it. Then there's a whole social campaign the night of, and then you see the long tail effect as they sort of do more of it. You've got that. That's just companies trying to get their money's worth. Absolutely. Yeah. Seven million dollars for Seven thirty million seconds. Dollars, yes, and it's only going to go up next year. Okay, it only does. I don't yes. think it's ever gone down. Exactly. All right. All right, Chief Content Officer for Adweek, Zoe Ruderman. Thanks so much for breaking it down Thanks for us. For Look forward me. to it. So those ads and the game, just two days away, excitement is building in Las Vegas, where the big game is being held for the first time. The reigning champs, the Chiefs, are facing a big threat from the 49ers. Here's Will Reeve. Tonight, the countdown's on. Less than 48 hours till kickoff. Super Bowl 58. The San Francisco 49ers and the reigning champs, the Kansas City Chiefs. And it's caught by Kelsey for the touchdown. The two quarterbacks facing off. Patrick Mahomes for the Chiefs in his fourth Super Bowl in five years. Against the 49ers, Brock Purdy, the very last pick in the 2022 NFL Draft. All of the strain, the stress is to get to this moment. And all you can do is just try to be your best every single game, every single day, and um, that's what I try to do. Las Vegas hosting its first ever Super Bowl. Security tight. We're right above Allegiant Stadium right there. That is where the game is going to be played. And this is how they're keeping the game and city safe. The average ticket going for nearly nine grand on resale sites. Are you going to the game? We're trying. We wish. <laughs> Geraldo and Trina Carrier from Cleveland. Fans, different teams coming together. Yes, I love it. Here we go, ready. Before kickoff Sunday, a moment to watch for. Six months this week since the catastrophic fires on Maui. The Lahaina Luna High School football team. ABC News has followed their whole season. The NFL selecting the team and their coaches as honorary captains. They'll be at midfield for the coin toss. Super thankful for all that they've like done for us and like have given to us. Uh, it, it, means, it means a whole lot to everyone. At halftime, Usher, and perhaps some guests. He just hinted there may be. But the big question tonight, will Taylor Swift make it to the Super Bowl? She's got a show in Tokyo the night before. Chiefs star tight end Travis Kelsey, proud of what they share and who they are. We love to shine light on others, shine light around the people that help and support us. Um, and on top of that, we feel like we both have uh, just a love for life. No word yet from Taylor, but if her final Tokyo show ends at 915 like it did last night, she'll be able to fly here in plenty of time for kickoff. Phil? Yes, there's been a lot of talk about can she make it. She'll definitely make it. Will, thank you. And that's our show for this hour. I'm Phil Lipoff. Stay with ABC News Live for more context and analysis of the day's top stories. Thanks for streaming with us. Coming up in the next hour, the fiery scene after a plane comes down on a busy interstate and the conflict in Sudan that's leading to warnings of malnutrition and possible famine. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories, start here. Now, that's a part of the story that you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3. 
what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love that. Me. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families trunk. here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. So the question is... Okay, here we go. Are you kidding me? What would you do? You just won't believe what people do when they think no one's watching. And this season, I brought Sarah Haynes and Kamau Bell along for the ride. All right, let's break it. Is John Theonis here? I was here all the time. The all-new season of What Would You Do? premieres Sunday, February 18th on ABC. Y'all tuning in for Taylor Swift, you're gonna be tuning in for Usher too. You're gonna do it, do it big. Oh my God. They say Oscar, Tony, Grammy, Emmy, you should put Super Bowl on there too. Baby, let me love you Usher now. Raymond is going to get shirtless. I don't think it'll break any FCC violations. <laughs> Go shirtless. Hey man, that's what I do. It's <laughs> Usher, baby. Yeah! Usher, my way to the Super Bowl. This is Impact by Nightline, now streaming on Hulu. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi, Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime, we'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights, wherever you stream your news, only on ABC News Live. Reporting from Monterey Park, California, I'm Robin Roberts. Wherever, wherever the story is, we're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Hey, good evening, everyone. This is ABC News Live Prime. I'm Phil Lipoff in tonight for Lindsay Davis. Thanks so much for streaming with us. We've got a lot of news to get to this evening, including the scary moments on a Florida highway when a private charter jet landed and crashed on a packed highway colliding with a vehicle as you see going up in smoke. We'll bring you those incredible images and what happened to those on board. Plus the 4.7 magnitude earthquake that rocked Malibu, California, and the festivities getting underway in Brazil despite the threat of a dangerous illness. But we begin on this busy Friday night with that deadly plane crash onto a Florida highway right in the middle of the afternoon. The private jet crashing on I-75 right near Naples, Florida, after the pilot was unable to reach the airport because of a reported engine failure. We are learning tonight at least two people have died, but three survivors were able to miraculously escape the burning wreckage. Tonight, the investigation into what went wrong is just getting underway. Our Victor Akendo leads us off from Florida. Oh my God! Oh my God! Tonight, that private jet oh engulfed in flames after crashing onto a busy Florida highway. A massive fireball in the middle of the afternoon rush. At least two people killed. We're clear to land, but we're not going to make the runway. Uh, we've lost both engines. Oh, there goes the wing. Yeah. Both engines failing on final approach just seconds before landing around 3 p.m. near Naples. Authorities saying five people were on board, two did not survive. Miraculously, three escaping with their lives. It took the top of that truck. The jet, a Bombardier Challenger 600, slamming into the southbound lanes of I-75 and colliding with a vehicle, leaving behind this fiery debris. And the barrier wall had a hole in it, was charred from, from fire and smoke. Joe Robinson watching in horror. As I passed by the crash, I could feel the heat from it as I was driving by from the opposite side of the highway. Bro. It seemed pretty catastrophic, pretty intense. How are you hurt? Uh, if those guys are OK, or what's going on? I can't tell you for sure, but it didn't look good just due to the smoke. Flight records show the plane took off from Columbus, Ohio, this scheduled for Naples Airport. Right the crash now. causing major traffic delays, authorities shutting down a stretch of I-75 as the investigation gets underway. And Victor joins me now. Victor, what comes next after this crash? 
Phil, that plane crashed just two miles from the airport. Tonight, the NTSB is investigating, working to determine what may have caused those engines to fail. Phil? Yep, an investigation is underway. Victor, thank you. We are also following developments in two separate earthquakes, one in California, the other in Hawaii. In California, a magnitude 4.6 quake hit near Malibu. That quake was felt by millions of people in the Los Angeles area. Just minutes earlier, a magnitude 5.7 earthquake hit just south of the Big Island with reports of aftershocks following that. ABC's chief national correspondent, Matt Gutman, is in Los Angeles. <laughs> Tonight, damage assessments underway after Southern California was rattled by a 4.6 magnitude earthquake. An earthquake has been felt in LA County. Our station, KEBC, broadcasting live when it struck. It's in Ventura County, Orange County, LA County. All of them have felt it. The epicenter, just northwest of Malibu. The shaking likely felt by millions of people, says seismologist Dr. Lucy Jones. I felt it here in Pasadena. It's felt widely across the LA area. It's about halfway between Malibu and Thousand Oaks, so under the what are called the Santa Monica Mountains. We do have reports of a couple of aftershocks, one of 3.0 northwest of Malibu, a 2.7 that is west northwest of Malibu. Well, it definitely moved, uh, moved a lot around here. The California quake coming on the heels of a 5.7 quake that hit the big island of Hawaii. Reporter Jeremy Lee from our station KITV is near the epicenter. It was felt all over the island, not only that, but also on other islands. Reports of the earthquake felt on Maui, on Oahu. That quake also followed by multiple aftershocks. Matt Gutman, thank you for that. We're going to move on now to President Biden furious and fighting back against special counsel report, clearing him over the handling of classified documents. But all of this has raised more questions about his age and mental acuity. The White House is now trying desperately to control the damage over what is already a key campaign issue. ABC's chief White House correspondent Mary Bruce reports in from the White House. Tonight, sources tell ABC News President Biden is fuming over the special counsel report that's raising new questions about his age and mental acuity. But in front of cameras today, Biden tight-lipped. Special counsel Robert Hur's report cleared Biden legally, concluding he should not face charges for his handling of classified material. One of the reasons Biden would likely present himself to a jury, as he did during our interview of him, as a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. Biden firing back. I'm well-meaning and I'm an elderly man and I know what the hell I'm doing. The president angry and emotional at hers claim that in his interview, Biden did not remember even within several years when his son Bo died. How in the hell dare he raise that? Frankly, when I was asked the question, I thought to myself, it wasn't any of their damn business. Today, the White House launched a full-throated attack on the special counsel, who once served as a U.S. attorney appointed by Donald Trump. First, it was Vice President Kamala Harris taking aim, asked by our Selena Wang. As a former prosecutor, do you take the special counsel report? The comments that were made by that prosecutor, gratuitous, inaccurate, and inappropriate. The way that the president's demeanor in that report was characterized could not be more wrong on the facts and clearly politically motivated, gratuitous. The spokesman for the White House counsel repeatedly attacking Robert Hur, questioning his motives for highlighting the president's memory lapses. We're in a very pressurized political environment and when you are the first special counsel in history not to indict anybody, there is pressure to criticize and to make, you know, statements that maybe in otherwise you wouldn't make. Mary joins us from the White House now. Mary, Team Biden clearly on the defensive tonight, but this issue is not going away. It sure isn't, Phil. In fact, recent polling shows that voters are still deeply concerned about the president's age, including a majority of Democrats. And people are also taking note of the president's public appearances. He's decided to forego this weekend's traditional Super Bowl interview and the chance to reach that massive audience. But the campaign is brushing off these concerns. They argue that voters have already made up their minds about the president's age. Phil. All right, Mary Bruce from the White House. Mary, thank you. Thank you.
And here in New York City, late word tonight of an arrest in the shooting of a tourist inside a store in Times Square. A 15-year-old from Venezuela accused of shoplifting, opening fire, then taking aim at officers while fleeing. ABC senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky has more on the late-breaking developments. Tonight, a 15-year-old who police called armed and dangerous has been caught after allegedly shooting a tourist in Times Square. In less than 24 hours, our teams removed a very, very violent subject that had zero reservations about firing shots and endangering our great public. Jesus Figueroa was apprehended in Yonkers less than 24 hours after police say he opened fire on officers and fled. Authorities say Figueroa was shoplifting Thursday evening at this sporting goods store. Surveillance video shows a female security guard confronting him in the lobby and yanking back the stolen items before the teen in white turns and pulls out a gun. My suspect takes out a 45 caliber handgun, a very large handgun, shoots at her into a crowd, striking a female tourist from Brazil. The shooter takes off on foot. When officers give chase, he fires at them twice. We heard a pop back there. The teen then dumps his jacket and ducks into the subway. Tonight, the tourist struck in the leg, telling our station WABC, Dá um pouco de medo, né? I leave Brazil, which is a dangerous place, to come here. Now I'm a little scared. The shooting follows the assault on police captured on body camera outside a migrant shelter in Times Square nearly two weeks ago. Seven people face charges. Police still looking for some of the suspects. We are going to pursue anyone that commits a crime. If they are long-standing New Yorkers or if they are new arrivals. And Aaron joins me now. Aaron, police tonight learning more about this suspect. They are, Phil, 15 years old. He recently arrived in the United States from Venezuela. That was back in September. And he had been staying at a city-run shelter for migrants, actually just up the block from here. Police also believe he may have been involved in a recent shooting in midtown Manhattan and a robbery up in the Bronx. Phil. Aaron Katursky from New York City tonight. Aaron, thank you. We move on now to the Israel-Hamas war. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu sing signaling a new escalation of attacks inside Gaza, ordering the evacuation of civilians from Rafah, which is where more than a million people have fled uh, for relative safety and shelter. President Biden criticizing Israel, calling its actions in Gaza, quote, over the top. ABC's James Longman in Israel again for us tonight. Tonight, fresh horror in the last remaining refuge for Palestinians in Gaza. Israeli bombs raining down on Rafah today. This baby pulled from the rubble alive. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu ordering civilians to evacuate Rafah, the southernmost city in Gaza, where more than one million Palestinians were told to flee for safety. But it's unclear where they'd go. Many, like Philistine Jamal Abdel Hamid, now crammed into tent cities. We've been suffering for more than five months. The place they said was safe, they entered it. There's no safe place, Philistine says. Israel claiming it must destroy four Hamas battalions still in Rafah. Hamas now says the Gaza death toll has soared to nearly 28,000 people. President Biden offering his sharpest criticism of Israel yet. The conduct of the response in, Gaza, in the Gaza Strip has been um, over the top. And tonight, ABC News has learned one of the Israeli hostages held in Gaza may have been killed in an Israeli airstrike. Israel telling the family of 53-year-old Yossi Sharabi he likely died when a building adjacent to an IDF target collapsed. Our thanks to James Longman. We shift now to our economy and the stock market on a record run. The S&P 500 gaining 28 points, closing above 5,000 points for the first time ever. It's notched 10 all-time highs so far this year, and it's up 14 of the past 15 weeks, something that hasn't happened since 1972. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze is joining me now for more on this. So, Elizabeth, what's this run about? You know, Phil, this is a big milestone. The S&P 500 tracks the 500 biggest companies in the U.S. It's what's reflected in most people's retirement or 401k accounts. And it hasn't ever crossed 5,000 until today. What is driving this is overall strength in the economy. We've seen that inflation is getting better. Consumers are outspending money and they're getting a little bit more upbeat about the economy, too. And at the same time, the jobs market is just humming along, adding hundreds of thousands of jobs every month. All of this is contributing to 
companies having strong earnings. We've seen that about 80% of, of companies that are big that have reported their earnings so far beat expectations. And especially that's the case with some of the biggest companies right now. So think of names like Microsoft, Meta, um, Google. Those are big companies that are really feeling a lot of the growth, especially when you look at the S&P 500, Phil. Elizabeth, you know this well. Sometimes when the numbers come out and they're good, not exactly felt by, say, the average hardworking American. So how does something like this, this kind of milestone, translate from Wall Street to Main Street? No question about it. And, and you know, there is the reality that overall gains in the stock market do tr tend to contribute to increased sentiment by consumers. So that does make households feel a little bit better about their finances when you see the stock market continue to have these types of gains. About 60% of households own stocks. So there are actual wealth effects from this. You know, you this is money that goes into your 401k. The S&P up 5% means that your portfolio would be up that much. A lot of, you know, I've been asking a lot of financial advisors, does that mean, you know, if you're not invested, it's too late to get in right now? The general General consensus is you want to try to build that long-term wealth. If you're in it for the long haul, still is a good time to try to think about making some of those investments because that is a way to try to get your longer-term wealth in, uh, better and also feel better about your finances too, Phil. All right, Elizabeth Schulze on the markets for us tonight. Elizabeth, thank you. Ahead of Sunday's Super Bowl, some Native American groups are protesting the Kansas City Chiefs, demanding they change the name. Kansas City fans bang a large drum at home games with fans chanting and doing the tomahawk chop, as they call it. The, the protesting groups are calling on owners and fans to stop appropriating and perpetuating stereotypes of Native people. A father fought off a man who tried to take his child from a CVS in Miami Beach. All of it caught on camera. Police are reviewing this video showing the 26-year-old suspect walking in, then just grabbing the four-year-old. The boy's father immediately reacting, fighting the man as the child runs back to his mother. The suspect who you see there was arrested. The boy shaken, but physically unharmed. Still much more to get to tonight. Coming up, our conversation with Emmy Award-winning filmmaker Patricia Gillespie about her new documentary, They Called Him Mostly Harmless. But next, hundreds celebrate Carnival in Rio, but it comes amid concern of a spreading illness. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In Rolling Fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. Tuning in for Taylor Swift, you're gonna be tuning in for Usher too. You're gonna do it, do it big. Oh my god. They say Oscar, Tony, Grammy, Emmy, you should put Super Bowl on there too. Usher Raymond is going to get shirtless. I don't think it'll break any FCC violations. Go shirtless. Hey man, that's what I do. It's Usher, baby. Yeah! Usher, my way to the Super Bowl. This is Impact by Nightline, now streaming on Hulu. I'm Aaron Katursky in Rochester, New York. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back. We are tracking several headlines around the world right now. UNICEF saying 700,000 children in Sudan are likely to suffer from the worst form of malnutrition this year, including tens of thousands who could actually die. A 10-month war 
in Sudan between armed forces and the paramilitary rapid support forces has devastated the country's infrastructure, prompting warnings of famine and displacing millions of people inside and outside the country. Former Pakistani prime ministers and bitter rivals Nawaz Sharif and Imran Khan both declaring victory in elections marred by delayed results and militant attacks, throwing the country into further political turmoil. The reaction on the streets was equally fragmented as supporters of both leaders celebrated their victories. Hundreds of revelers took to the streets in Rio de Janeiro to celebrate the start of Carnival despite concerns of a dengue fever outbreak in Brazil. Many say despite the outbreak, they will continue to enjoy the festivities while taking measures to avoid mosquito bites. Brazilian authorities say the rapid spread of dengue has caused 40 confirmed deaths and a further 265 cases are being investigated. The body of an unidentified hiker was found in Florida. The search for answers taken up by devoted internet sleuths who collect information and trace evidence, turning the case into a mission to identify the person, simply known by a nickname. This is now the subject of the new documentary, They Called Him Mostly Harmless. Take a look. No wallet, no credit cards, no photo ID. We don't really know who he is. How difficult is this gonna be? This is my first case. By day, I'm the mild-mannered delivery person. And at night, I get unidentified people identified. Joining me now is an Emmy Award, Emmy Award winning filmmaker, director Patricia Gillespie. Patricia, thanks so much. Thank you for, for joining us. Me. This thanks. looks fascinating. What made you want to turn this story into a documentary? Um, you know, I, I was initially approached with the story by my colleague uh, Ethan Goldman at Anchor Entertainment, and at that point, it was you know the story of this this man who'd been found deceased and had no identity. And but what I saw when um, I looked deeper was a bigger story about the true crime community and the sleuthing community, and and why these stories really grab us and move us. And I was interested in exploring that and some of these themes about what it means to be alive in the digital age. Hmm. There are quite a few cases of unidentified persons, as you know. What, what was it about Mostly Harmless that intrigued internet sleuths in that community so much? Yeah, I mean, I think there are some sort of straightforward uh, answers about uh, the fact that he had met so many people on the trail but not given them his name, the fact that he died in this very unusual circumstance. He was emaciated but had food in his tent. Um, there were a bunch of facts about the case that made him interesting, but at the end of the day, I also think it, it's worth mentioning he's a good-looking, relatively young white guy, and that's very shareable. And there are thousands and thousands of other does who don't find themselves in mm. that demographic, and their stories don't get shared. So I appreciate you asking that question. We've all heard about these amateur investigators um, who use the Internet to look into these cases. What did you find out about them as you interviewed them for this for this documentary as a community? What is it about them? Yeah, so I think there, you know, there's been a lot of discourse around true crime um, lately. And I think some of it has been kind of dismissive and I, I or critical. And I, I never mind when they're critical of us, the makers, but there's something that always bugs me when they're critical of our audience. Yeah, you have said that before, that you don't like how people are critical of this particular community. Why is that? Yeah, I, well, look, I think that the true crime audience is skews female, and I think like a lot of things that skew female, it's easy to dismiss or make light of. Um, but in reality, there's this perception that these are like lonely women who like gory details or whatever. Um, but I think what, what's actually going on is an exercise in empathy. I think these are women who are interested, or people, the true crime audience are people who are interested in examining life with these very high stakes of, of life and death, who are interested in seeing people maintain their goodness in the face of, mm. um, you know, something dark or evil or scary. And I, I really wanted to examine it through these women in this story because I felt like they weren't just spectating, they were doing something. And I felt that was special and deserved to be highlighted. There was a write-up in the New York Times 
I'm sure you saw it. Uh, it, it, was, it was a nice write-up yeah. about the documentary. One line stuck out to me at the very end. Um, the, the critic had said, uh, the best documentaries turn the camera on us. I'm paraphrasing if, she, if she's watching. But um, that, that, was what I, that was what I thought. And so I want to know, did you go into this thinking you were going to focus on Mostly Harmless or the community that was trying to solve the mystery? You know, as a filmmaker, I tried to go in with questions rather than answers. Um, but what what started to emerge to me that the was that to me the real story um, wasn't about the details of this you know private citizen who had unfortunately died under these mysterious circumstances. It was about who he became as sort of this cipher on the internet. Mm. That all these people, the hikers, the sleuths, poured an idea into. And it was usually an idea of him being who they needed him to be or wanted him to be mm. or wished him to be. And we do that so much online. Patricia, thank you so much thank for you. taking time to talk about it with us. If you want to find out how the mystery ends, and I can't imagine you wouldn't now, you can stream They Called Him Mostly Harmless on Max. And still to come, what to look for in this weekend Super Bowl and how much a last minute ticket is going to cost you. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. Y'all tuning in for Taylor Swift, you're gonna be tuning in for Usher too. You're gonna do it, do it big. Oh my God. They say Oscar, Tony, Grammy, Emmy, you should put Super Bowl on there too. Baby, let me love you Usher now. Raymond is going to get shirtless. I don't think it'll break any FCC violations. <laughs> Go shirtless. Hey man, that's what I do. It's <laughs> Usher, baby. Yeah! Usher, my way to the Super Bowl. This is Impact by Nightline, now streaming on Hulu. Welcome back. The Super Bowl is just two days away now, and excitement is building in Las Vegas, where the big game is being held for the first time. The reigning champs, the Chiefs, are facing a big threat from the 49ers. Here's Will Reeve. Tonight, the countdown's on. Less than 48 hours till kickoff. Super Bowl 58. The 49ers are going to the Super Bowl. The San Francisco 49ers and the reigning champs, the Kansas City Chiefs. And it's caught by Kelsey for the touchdown. The two quarterbacks facing off, Patrick Mahomes for the Chiefs in his fourth Super Bowl in five years against the 49ers' Brock Purdy, the very last pick in the 2022 NFL Draft. All of the strain, the stress is to get to this moment. And all you can do is just try to be your best every single game, every single day, and um, that's what I try to do. Las Vegas hosting its first ever Super Bowl. Security tight. We're right above Allegiant Stadium right there. That is where the game is going to be played. And this is how they're keeping the game and city safe. The average ticket going for nearly nine grand on resale sites. Are you going to the game? We're trying. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Geraldo and Trina Carrier from Cleveland. Fans, different teams coming together. Yes, I love it. Here we go, ready. Before kickoff Sunday, a moment to watch for. Six months this week since the catastrophic fires on Maui. The Lahaina Luna High School football team. ABC News has followed their whole season. The NFL selecting the team and their coaches as honorary captains. They'll be at midfield for the coin toss. Super thankful for all that they've like done for us and like have given to us. Uh, it, it means it means a whole lot to everyone. At halftime, Usher and perhaps some guests. He just hinted there may be. But the big question tonight, will Taylor Swift make it to the Super Bowl? She's got a show in Tokyo the night before. Chiefs star tight end Travis Kelsey proud of what they share 
and who they are. We love to shine light on others, shine light around the people that help and support us. Um, and on top of that, we feel like we both have uh, just a love for life. Which will no doubt be captured on camera Sunday. That's our show for tonight. I'm Phil Lipoff. ABC News Live is here for you all night with the latest news context and analysis. You can always find us on Hulu, Roku, Pluto TV, the ABC News app, and of course, abcnews.com. Good night. Another avalanche warning that's up. To catch you up with what happened overnight. A dangerous ice storm is impacting the morning commute. What's happening today, escalating tensions in the Middle East. What people are talking about, the migrant crisis. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. How does billionaire sound? Sounds good to me. The moose started chasing a dog. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. So the question is... Okay, here we go. Oh Are you kidding me? What would you do? You just won't believe what people do when they think no one's watching. And this season, I brought Sarah Haynes and Kamau Bell along for the ride. All right, let's break it. Is John Theonis here? I was here all the time. The all-new season of What Would You Do? premieres Sunday, February 18th on ABC. Y'all tuning in for Taylor Swift, you're gonna be tuning in for Usher too. You're gonna do it, do it big. Oh my God. They say Oscar, Tony, Grammy, Emmy, you should put Super Bowl on there too. Baby, let me love you Usher now. Raymond is going to get shirtless. I don't think it'll break any FCC violations. <laughs> Go shirtless. Hey man, that's what I do. It's <laughs> Usher, baby. Yeah! Usher, my way to the Super Bowl. This is Impact by Nightline, now streaming on Hulu. Reporting from the Iowa caucuses, I'm Whit Johnson. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. This is Nightline. Hey there, how are you doing? What's going on? How are it's you? It's so nice to see you. you too, Absolutely. The man of the hour. Welcome to my humble uh, daily abode. Exactly. Is doing things his way. I'm very, very, very proud at the moment that I'm getting ready to have for America. It's been a dream of mine and a bucket list. You know, they say Oscar, Tony, Grammy, Emmy. Yeah. You should put Super Bowl <laughs> on there too, right? Usher, the worldwide best-selling R&B legend. Bye -bye, love you, love you, love you.